If we talking looks, sound hooks, I'm the littest one. Just sent your wifey five a So fresh and fresh and clean. I keep it viewed on that Don Julio. Cause I be eating weed. Hey you guys, what up? It's your boy Tyson. So, y'all we grown, right? And you know we friends, right? You know what? Maybe we should stop saying shit like that. That's why these parasocial relationships be getting us fucked up. I mean, trust me. Influencer to person, celebrity to person, whatever, you definitely gonna have some parasocial relationships, but I don't think that helps. But neither here nor there. Maybe I'm being a little too woke. Um, what does woke mean? Um, you know, it, um, um, <laughs> at any rate, we grown, right? Um, the freaks come out at night. And, um, as soon as I get this text message, I'm gonna have to bounce on y'all ass. But, <laughs> until then, welcome to episode eight of Pretty Part and Poem. And so... On today's episode, I want to speak about the war that keeps giving gender. And really, I attack this situation from a black community perspective because I'm black. Um, And I've noticed that a lot of the isms that occur in the world, when you take them into the black community, they are like amplify to the tenfold like first of all we have no shame with our shit indians asians they're not like openly colorist like i'm don't get me wrong in dealing with their interpersonal family relationships yeah they're definitely colorist i've heard some horror stories from both of those ethnicities um Hell, my damn manager is Blasian. He has all of the Asian phenotype, but his hair is a bit more on the coarser side. I imagine he probably has some stories he could tell. You know what I'm saying? So it's no secret how those communities can be in that regard, but they don't uphold that shit. Like, they don't have artists who come out and say colorist shit in their music, and then people support it and buy it and fund these shitty people's lifestyles. You know what I'm saying? And hell, even in that aspect, like men just really got to exist. Black men in general. Look at all the black male rappers. Where is the Megan the, Equi- Megan the Stallion equivalent? Like she's in school. She's uh, she got a degree. Like where's her equivalent to that? Where is the equivalent to a rapper like No Name who is conscious? You know what I'm saying? Where and that, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying there aren't some here, but I'm saying like whenever you look at black women. Yeah, we were all put through the same stuff and black women had it worse because they were fucking women and some of y'all act stupid when people say shit like that. Like, I want to believe we don't have bricks for brains, black men, but oh my God, oh my God, the way we be responding to shit sometimes, it be killing me, it be killing me. Even I, as the man of the community that doesn't get the most privilege because of how I present, can admit that I still got privilege over a fucking woman. She's a fucking woman. This is basic ABC knowledge. But y'all can misandry all day long if y'all want to. My God. My God. That's another conversation for another day, chill. At any rate, back to what I was saying, though. Um... All the isms, they just, they're terrible. You know what I'm saying? Most of our famous rappers are colorists. They're texturists. They're featurists. And y'all can preference it all day long. Y'all, like, y'all, y'all, nobody is listening to y'all. Nobody believes y'all. Like, it's really when people start saying, oh, they have a preference. Oh, what's wrong with the preference? Like, it really just gives very much. Motherfucking music. You. Are you dumb? Like, I will never take a black person serious that can write me a 50 page essay on racism, but can't produce a one minute TikTok on colorism. That is honest. And that is nuanced. And that is accurate. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not. Just, you don't get none of my time. But at any rate, that's another conversation for another day. I just, like, when I look at our community, 
the way I see black men handling black women. Like, it's disgusting. And don't get me wrong, women are not by chance perfect or by far perfect. But I definitely would say most of any backlash that a woman gives, I would say most of it is pertaining to patriarchy, which was created by men who, yes, black men, white men created it. But guess what? You benefit from it because you're a fucking man. You just naturally benefit from it. Y'all can sit there and rap all this slutty ass music, slut yourselves out to these um, non-black women because you're men. You still thrive off patriarchy. That's why you can sit on these podcasts and say that you have 200 bodies, but you don't want a girl with more than six. That's why y'all can say this stupid shit. That's why y'all can do these stupid ass podcasts playing with our image. Making us look like idiots. But, you know, when men like me call that out, we're bashing. So, you know, (laughs) lack of accountability. Lack of accountability. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Y'all ain't even ready for that conversation, so I'm just going to skip past that. But, yeah, um, like I said, I would say most of what women... Like, prime example, that situation with the um, Getter J Keating Sixth girl on Twitter. Y'all are disregarding when y'all said that y'all wanted to R her and threaten to ill her. So, yeah, y'all got some of that smoke that y'all called black. Yeah, y'all got, okay, she called y'all a ullet bag. Okay. I've seen black men call black women weave heads, call them bed wrenches, read between the lines. Um, all types of nasty things. You know what I'm saying? And hell, I'm just, I'm sure I was born the right gender, bitch. Cause if I had seen all this shit, bitch, I, mm, I ain't even gonna say that, but <clears throat> let me just go ahead to what I was saying. I don't, for the life of me, like, could never understand, you know, being the black woman, being the one that stayed, being the one that, took the licks being the one that helped raise these ungrateful ass sons who yeah okay you know we could talk about vetting and choosing better but then has to come the real reality that y'all don't want to discuss which is there's not much better to choose from as black men and I say that as a black man who's working on myself you know what I'm saying there's a reason why I don't necessarily date um and one of those is I'm not there yet you know what I'm saying? Whether that's mentally with therapy. Hell, look at the way y'all handle that therapist. You know what I'm saying? For men who weren't even going to go get therapy in the first place. Oh, my God. But anyway, going back, like, you get your energy that you get back. And that's another thing, the arrogance. The arrogance with this community as far as the men are concerned. For men who, like, I still have to go to Bradley to go get loans and shit. We still have to mess with the dominant society to go do anything majorly as a community and i don't want to hear about tulsa i don't want i don't want to hear about all that shit that is not current shit meanwhile you got black women on the grounds fighting marching for y'all the same y'all that be telling them that they're dark and ugly the same y'all that be telling them that dark bees bring dark days like it, 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 the nerve of you to even be upset there's no community. There's no real community. There is no healthy water. There's no drinking fountains. There's no, there's nothing. This community is nothing but a bunch of feel good symbolic bullshit when you really get down to it. And again, I won't discredit the feats that we have had as black people and our resilience to fight in this country. I'll never discredit that. You know what I'm saying? And the people that have fought. But the niggas of today are not the niggas of Martin Luther's lineage. And the sooner that y'all get hip to that, yeah, there's a few good black men that I have in my life that, you know, okay, they have rounded, level-headed perspectives, no out-of-wedlock children, 
no broken homes, no this, no that. But I can also count a number that do have that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm working on weeding those out too because, you know, when it comes to this black progressive shit, you have to be about it. You can't just talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, But at any rate, neither here nor there. I just don't know... Actually, I do know I was having this conversation with a friend and and this is actually it's shaped how I look at a lot of black people. This is not just specific to the men, because I'll see a lot of coonish behavior from black women as well. And I get it. Patriarchy, you know, men lead the community. So even though, you know, we're not worthy of following, y'all do follow us. Um, But neither here nor there. Um, I remember this conversation um, that I was having with a friend. I might have said this on another podcast episode. Can't remember. But she spoke about like the psychological damage that's done to our, you know, DNA, our nervous system, our membranes that, you know, like we were beaten on. We were awed. We were, excuse me, we were mutilated at shows like people bought tickets to see black men black women get ripped apart like that's some real traumatic shit and that's been passed on through dna ancestors after ancestors um like you know what i'm saying that has had a plague i think on a lot of our fight our will to hey you guys if you would like to hear the rest of this podcast please check me out on anchor.fm Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all other podcasting platforms. Thank you for listening.